In this video, we're going to download and install SQL Server Express and SSMS so we can create our first queries. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Now, don't worry about the term server. You don't need a server to install it on. Any modern desktop or laptop that's a Windows or a Linux machine will be fine. If you've got a Macintosh, then you'll need to have a way to boot into Windows, so either using parallel desktop or dual booting. So here you can see the address that I'm going to download it from. And it shows these options. We can use SQL Server on Azure, so that's the cloud, SQL Server at the edge for Internet of Things, or SQL Server on premises, in other words, on your computer. But I'm not going to use any of those. I'm going to download a specialized edition. Now there is the developer edition, and it's a really good thing. It gives you the power of the full Enterprise Edition without any of the cost. It's slightly more difficult to install, but not hugely. And if you're going to go on and look at SSIS, SSRS, or SSAS, so that's SQL Server Integration Services, Reporting Services, or Analysis Services, then I would use the Developer Edition right from the beginning, because you would need this for those additional services. If, however, you want to learn TSQL, so select star or asterisk from name of table, or if you want to have a look at some database administration, then you could download the Express Edition, which is what we're going to do in this video. So feel free to download the Developer Edition. If you want to do that, then please have a look at a YouTube video of mine, which shows how to install the Developer Edition. It's slightly more complicated. But for this video, we're going to install the Express Edition, which is slightly easier to install. Now, as a quick note, this requires Windows 10 with a certain update, update 15, or Windows 11, and it requires a 64-bit processor. So that's the majority of modern computers. If you're not sure, then just download it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, it will tell you so very clearly. And then I will download SQL Server 2014 Express. Again, I've got another YouTube video for how to do that. So I'm going to click on Download Now next to the Express. And you can see the initial program downloads very quickly. This is what's called a bootstrap. Now, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I'm going to say yes. So the bootstrap is just a program that allows you to download additional programs. So we've got three different installation types, basic, custom and download media. Basic will download it and install the program with the default configuration, which is probably suitable if what you want to do is to learn how to program TSQL. Custom allows you a few more options and download media just downloads it but does not install it. So that means you could download it on a centralized computer and then install it on multiple computers. So I'm going to install it two ways. I'm going to install it using basic and then custom so you can see what the difference is. So first of all, basic, right? There is a terms and conditions. It's basically saying this is free software. So click accept, S select where you want it to be installed. I'm going to change it so that it is installed in Microsoft SQL Server 2022 Express. You might, if you have got more than one drive and a small C drive, want to change the drive at this stage. And you click install. And that's it for the basic configuration. So while it's installing, let's have a look at some of the terminology that we've come across. So there are multiple editions. The Express edition is this cut down version that's free. You've got the developer edition. That's a more expanded version. That is also free, but it can't be used in many places. You'll still be able to use the developer edition on your own computer for learning purposes, but that's it for the developer edition. You can use it for testing purposes, but you can't use it for production purposes. Then you have got paid for versions. You've got the standard version. You've got the enterprise version, among others. And these can cost quite a bit of money. Now let's have a look at the 2022 version. Well, SQL Server, the first year version, was in the year 2000. And then there was a 2005, 2008. And then the next one was not 2010, which is when they released it, but it was called 2008 
R2, release 2. But they didn't do that in future. In future they did 2012, 2014, 2016, and you'd think the next one would be 2018, but no, we've got 2017, 2019, and now 2022. So there's generally a release one every two years. So now you can see that it has successfully completed. So the next step will be to install SSMS, and you can do that from this button here. But next, we'll be doing exactly the same thing, but using the custom process. So if you've installed SQL Server with the basic process, feel free to finish this video, and I'll see you on the next video. And if you're staying with me, let's have a look at how to install SQL Server 2022 Express using the custom installation. So now let's click on custom. So you can change the media download target location, so where it is going to download to. So that's fine for me. Click install. So for this custom installation, it is going to download it first, then give us a series of options and then install. So I'm just going to let it download. Right, so it's just finished extracting the setup files and now it launches this window. So if you aren't already, make sure you are in the installation tab and then click on new SQL Server standalone installation. So this opens up another window so we can minimize all of these other windows. So again, we've got license terms and conditions, so have a read of them and then accept them if you wish to do so and then click on next. So it's just checking to make sure you've got the latest files and then checking your computer. Now there is a warning here for Windows Firewall. Don't worry, this is normal. It just says Windows Firewall is enabled. So let's click on next. And here we have something new for the SQL Server 2022 setup. It's requiring you to put in Azure extension for SQL Server details. Except it's not. You can just uncheck this box. And unless you're using Azure, I suggest you do so. And then click on next. Now we have a number of features that can be installed. Now my suggestion is, if you just want to use the database for database administration and or creating your own TSQL select statements, that you unselect everything and you just check database engine services. So next, we click on next. It will just check that this is a valid set of rules. And then it's asking you, do you want a default installation or a named instance? Now your computer can only have one default installation installed at any one time. So if you've previously installed SQL Server 2022, then you will need a named instance. So use a default instance if you haven't already got one set up. If not, then use a named instance. I'm going to use a named instance so that you can see how to connect to it later on. So let's click next. And it's now going to just give you some options regarding the server configuration. I recommend leaving this as is. So you've got collation here. That just says what sort of language you'll be using for sorting. So click next. And you'll find there's a lot of clicking next coming up. Database engine configuration. So are you going to log in as a Windows user, so you don't need any username or password, or are you going to allow both? I would suggest for the purposes of experimenting on your own computer that you use the simplest version, and that is Windows Authentication Mode. You can see the computer has automatically added you as administrator. Now again, if you need a bit more space on your C drive, if you've got a small C drive and you need to install elsewhere, then go into Data Directories, and go into temp db and change the drive that you're using. So let's click next. And now it's saying, okay, everything's fine. Let's install. So I'm going to let the computer install. And as you can see, it all installed successfully. So let's click close. And now we've installed the back engine of SQL Server 2022. 
We have now installed SQL Server 2022 Express. That's the back engine. However, we can't really use it easily because we haven't got a user-friendly front engine. And that would be SQL Server Management Studio. So if you're on this screen, you can click on Install SQL Server Management Tools. If you have done the basic installation, then you can click Install SSMS down at the bottom. Alternatively, you can go to a search engine and you can type in SQL Server Management Studio. So whatever way you do this, you will get to this web page. Now, I recommend downloading the latest version of SSMS that is not a preview. So at the time of recording, we have got SSMS 19 Preview 3. I don't recommend installing that. Instead, I recommend downloading the latest general availability version. So you can see it here. You might see a different version. You might see a version 19. Whatever the latest version it is, is fine. Most of the changes are in the background. You'll see the same sort of user interface, regardless which version you choose. So I'm going to click on free download for SQL Server Management Studio. And you can see that it is downloading. It's around 650 megabytes. So I'm just going to let it download. Right, so right now it has downloaded. So I'm going to click on it to run. You might need to go to your download folder to do this. And in a few seconds, we will get another question. Are you willing to allow this app to make changes to your system? So here you have the directory where it's going to install. I would suggest changing the C drive to a D drive if you've got a really small C drive and then just click install and then it should install very easily. Now it will install SQL Server Management Studio along with Azure Data Studio. So this is another way to create your select statements. You don't need to be using Azure to use Azure Data Studio. So I'm just going to let it install. And here you can see SSMS has been successfully installed. So now we've installed the back engine of SQL Server Express. We've installed the front engine of SQL Server Management Studio. The next thing we need to do is to run SQL Server Management Studio. Now let's run SSMS. So I'm going to close all of my windows and I'll go to my start menu and I'll type in SSMS and we see that we've got the latest version of SQL Server Management Studio, the one that we've just installed. So I click on that and it starts to open. It might take a few seconds the first time we do this. And here we are. So the first thing it needs to know is the connection. It needs to know you have sufficient rights to be able to log into SQL Server. After all, there's going to be a lot of data that you have on SQL Server and we need to make sure that the right person is accessing the right information and can get access to SQL Server in the first place. Now, as you are the one who have installed SQL Server Express, because we put you down as an administrator, you have the right to whatever you want. So what is your server name? Well, because you've downloaded it on your computer, if it is a default instance, then it could be a dot or it could be the word local host, one word. So try one of those and see if it works. Now, if you've got multiple SQL servers, then you will need to select which one. And we can click the drop down list and go to browse for more and then expand database engine. So here you can see my named instance. So it's got the name of my computer and then a slash and then the name of the instance. We'll probably leave the authentication as is. We asked for Windows authentication and so we need to use Windows authentication. Later on, if you decide to change this to SQL Server authentication, then you can log in using that. So now I'm going to click connect. And here I am now connected to my SQL Server. So that is the difficult part of installing all done. Everything else that you may wish to do regarding TSQL or database administration can be done in this one program. Now we've also installed Azure Data Studio. You can use that as well for creating your select statements. So 
I would go to new connection and then type the details in for your server. So in this case, dot or local host, and then click connect. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to stick with SQL Server Management Studio. So let's have a quick tour. So on the left hand side, we've got the Object Explorer. If you close it, then you can open it up again by going to View, Object Explorer. So this shows your databases. So we don't have any user databases at the moment. And we have security, server objects, replication, polybase, and management. And quite frankly, when you're starting out, you won't need to look at any of those. It's the databases that you should be looking at. Now there are a lot of menus and menu items, but most of them you won't necessarily need. For example, if you need find and replace, then you will be able to find that in the edit section. And there's a lot of icons. And again, the majority of these icons you won't need. The ones that you will need the most are new query and execute. So let's click on new query. So we now get this new window and we can have as many new queries as we want. So I'm just going to close all of them bar one. So a query window is where you enter your select statement. So I'm going to enter one of the most basic ones, select one plus one, click on execute and you get your results at the bottom. So that is what a query window allows you to do. So new query and execute are the most important parts of this toolbar along with this. And this shows you which database you're in. So we have now successfully installed SQL Server back engine, the front engine, SSMS, and we've opened and had a quick look around SQL Server Management Studio. So now we can start learning how to use SQL Server. So now we've installed SSMS and SQL Server. Where do you go from here? Well, if you'd like to learn SQL Server, then I hope you will have a look at my Udemy videos. In these courses, I take you through various aspects of SQL Server. So if you want to learn how to query SQL Server, then I've got a range of courses depending on whether you have got around one hour, around nine hours, or 29 hours to really get in depth. If you're looking for database administration, then please join me in my DBA course. If you're looking for SSAS, SSIS, or SSRS, then I have got courses on these as well. So you can learn how to use SSRS reporting services, either version of SSAS. So whether you're looking for the multi-dimensional MDX version or the tabular version and SSIS. Additionally, I've got a more advanced course for administering SQL on the cloud in Azure. Links to all of these courses are included in the description to this video. Additionally, if you want to learn SSRS, SSAS or SSIS and use it on your computer, then you will need an additional program. You will need Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. Again, this is free. And then you will need to install the appropriate extension. So I have additional videos on my YouTube channel for how to do this for SSRS, SSAS or SSIS. So if you want those, I hope you will look at the playlist which hopefully is on the screen now and click to get to your next video. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click that bell next to it. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.